And welcome back to Beirut Food Vlogs, the best food vlogs in the world. Today we are in Saida and you might be wondering, why am I dressed up like this? You need to watch the vlog to figure it out. There's gonna be amazing destinations we'll be discovering today with some twists, I mean, visibly. So stay tuned and enjoy the vlog. Peace out! Saida is the third largest city in Lebanon. This coastal city is famous for its ancient souks and monuments that derive from its rich history. But above all, it is home to many culinary gems as we can still find traces of influence from other Middle Eastern cultures to this day. We are in Saida to specifically explore the incredible know-how and variety of foods it has to offer, from intricate desserts to the craziest street food and obviously some unmissable local experiences. <laughs> So today we start our tour of the city with Al Baba Sweets, which is super famous right here. It's one of the first sweet makers in Lebanon. And we will be going and visiting the factory of Al Baba to see how the sweets are made. Al Baba is one of the most renowned Arab sweets maker in Lebanon. This four generation old family business dates back to the 1950s. It started with a 50 square meter kitchen and eventually grew into a huge factory with multiple franchises, making Al Baba Sweets one of the leading Arabic sweets company, not only in Lebanon, but in the whole Middle East. They have maintained top quality standards while continuously innovating in their craft. It's a lot more than simple cuisine here. It's a whole art with incredible diversity of ingredients, tastes, textures, shapes, and colors. Al-Baba sweets are perfectly crafted, all handmade in the right quantities at the right temperatures and with the right timing. And it's for this reason that the sweets are so successful, even in non-Arab countries, which is why they're vacuum sealed and sent all over the world. Today, we will be learning about the making of three different sweets. So right here, we are in the factory of Al-Baba and uh, this factory is basically divided into different areas. We're in the baklava area and uh, they start by uh, using phyllo dough as the base of the baklava and then they use some stuffings such as pistachio or cajun nuts. Baklava is a sweet pastry made of layers of phyllo dough filled with chopped nuts and held together with syrup. The baklava dough is made of many phyllo layers that are flattened several times, then and rolled out over and over until it's thin and wide enough. The dough is cut into tiny rectangular pieces ready to be filled with the mixture of nuts. Alibaba mainly uses cashew and pistachio nuts. Let's just take five seconds to look at how fast the sweet maker works. It's so satisfying to watch. Then the baklawas are folded in a very specific way and placed in a special grid and vice versa. In the factory, the machines are custom made to make the sweets in the most efficient way. Check out, for example, how they're pouring the syrup on the baklawas while the machine is making them rotate. Then the baklawas are delicately placed with a great amount of skill into the oven for just over an hour. And finally, they're coated with another round of syrup as soon as they come out. Area number two is the area of ma'amoul and basically they make uh, very special ma'amouls here. In a nutshell, ma'amoul is a filled semolina cookie usually made with dates or nuts such as pistachios or walnuts. Yeah. We're used to eat ma'amoul uh, for Easter in Lebanon and usually it's made out of pistachios and dates. But here what's interesting is they make it out of apricot and bitter orange. Is it good? So the process of the marmoul is pretty simple. They basically put a hole in the dough and they put the uh, apricot paste in the dough of the marmoul and then they almond coat it and then they put it in the oven. Now he's doing this with a uh, bitter orange. Apricot was right before. Variety. So the marmoul can be handmade but also uh, a machine can help. So right here there's a machine that's helping and obviously the last touch is handmade because uh, it needs to be perfectly round. The last step of making the marmouls is marking them with a fork and placing them into the oven. Oh. I, lo I love this so much more and I never heard of it. Mm. It's so good. Highly recommend it if you don't like dates or pistachios. We are here in the third and last area we're going to be covering today in El Baba's factory. Here we're going to be covering the knefe and how they make it. Knefe is another traditional Arabic dessert that is made in Al Baba with fine semolina dough, cheese layers and coated in sugar-based syrup. Start off by spreading some ghee on a rectangular pan. Then sift the semolina on top of it until it becomes very fine. Then flatten the surface out before putting the pan on the fire. Add rakawi cheese and string cheese that we call jadal. And after the cheese melts, spread it evenly, then turn the knefe over. Cover it in syrup and then put it back on the fire for a bit of time. And that's how you make this marvelous breakfast dish, which is actually one of the all-time favorites 
of Lebanese people. When we know how much work and know-how goes into preparing these beautiful dishes behind the scenes, it's even better to look at the final table and get to taste all those wonders. Lakhmi <laughs> Bajin. Mmm. Oh, wow. Crispy as it should be. We eat it with the dibes ramen. This is the asmali of jibne. We saw how it was made next to the knefe downstairs in the factory. Oh my gosh, this is so crispy. Holy shit. Our second destination for the day is Furun Nadef, a traditional family run bakery. And it's a furun that's been around for 40 years. I mean, obviously, like all foreigners, they do traditional Arabic breads and manaish. Manaish! <laughs> Here, the production rhythm is super fast-paced. And it's pretty normal, since they need to always keep up with the quantity of orders to feed all the neighborhood every morning. Furun Nadef has really unique features. Here, the manaoushe dough is made with three types of flour. White, brown, and chouffan flour. After flattening each dough ball and placing them on a wooden tray, two toppings are then added to them either thyme or cheese. When you can choose, just choose both thyme and cheese. Mm. <laughs> They're baked in a traditional stone oven to which salt is added regularly. The oven is heated at such high temperatures that everything is ready in just a couple of seconds. And here you go, you got an amazing quantity of crunchy and delicious Arabic breads and manoushe. What's interesting here is that in all the cheese manoushe, they add some sesame seeds. Let's taste it. Cheers. Boom. Then we headed straight into the souks. And while exploring them, we found another great place that makes a special sweet that comes straight from Turkey. So right now, we're in the old souks of Saida, finally. And uh, you can see a lot of very narrow streets. It's very cool. So right here, we are in Lukum Marwan Sharaf. They do Lukum, which is a Turkish delight. Uh, and they, they do it here with uh, rose water, basically. Lukum is made with starch gel, various flavorings, and icing sugar. I'm gonna taste it. It's so true, I, I always loved lukum. I usually eat it with like two biscuits. The taste is rose water for those specific ones, but there's a lot of different flavors that could be made of lukum. Deeper into the souks, we stumbled upon an old church. It's a very, very old church. They say that some of the apostles came here. So right now, where are we? Wow. We're in the Hemel. Hemel El Jadid. El Jadid. The, whole, the, the whole architecture is incredible. Like you feel in another, in a completely other vibe. It's been 300 years that people would come here to bathe, but look at this, it's beautiful. So this is how it actually looked like. 300 years ago, this was actually the Hammam El Shajid. I'm in a jacuzzi, but with no water jet. <laughs> okay, now we're entering another Hammam. Oh, that's an actual functioning one. You can see right behind. Man, we decided to do an unexpected Hammam. I actually never did one. I'm excited to see, and uh, hopefully, there's not gonna be anything weird happening. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I didn't expect him to bait me at all, but that's what's happening. <laughs> uh, please, a, a bit of privacy, please. So here, what he did, he basically scrubbed out all the, the dead skin out of my body and then he did a normal shower. So he basically used soap and, and shampoo and then he does uh, some massages and he, he takes out all the knots in my muscles, especially in my back, it was very painful, and my legs as well. <laughs> wow, this is painful. <laughs> okay, we just finished the hammam and now we're gonna be going to the next destination. What's the next destination? Let's figure out what's the next destination. <laughs> Thank you. We just arrived at Saifo, another sweet maker that opened four years ago. This is Saif Dean. He has been in the business since the 90s and his expertise can clearly be tasted in the sweets he makes, especially the spoof. He's making the spoof right in front of your eyes. And I'm gonna be explaining to you exactly how they make it. It's a weird mix. I never saw that many ingredients in one bowl. <laughs> Svoof is a Lebanese almond semolina cake consumed on special occasions. Combine semolina flour with turmeric, sugar, 
baking powder, sesame paste, aniseed, and finally tain it to avoid having the mix sticking to the pan. Then add a thin layer of ghee before pouring out the mixture, removing the bubbles, and sprinkling some cashew nuts. And into the oven it goes for 30 minutes. And here you go, you got this foof that's completed after a half an hour of baking. Nearby, another hidden gem can be found, the local fouel. A fouel is someone that has um, a small place where they boil fool and hummus. With those two ingredients, they derive several recipes, like fatte, like hummus, like balila, like sabaha. Ahmad Shibli here has established his restaurant 22 years ago. And now he's making us some uh, fatty hummus and sabha. With passion and love, you have no and idea. Hummus. Here's how the fatte is made. It's a mix of garlic, lemon yogurt, chickpeas, fried breadcrumbs, cashew nuts, butter, and spices. Every fouil uses some specific ingredients that make their dishes stand out. Here I would say it's the spices that they use and the mint leaves. We eat the fatte with a bit of bread that we call litme. <laughs> Cheers! And so it's tasty, it's crunchy, and it's creamy. Next, we headed to the soap museum. Open! Yes! Welcome to the soap museum! Now we're in one of the most visit places of Saida, the soap museum. This museum illustrates the history of soap making in Saida and showcases the different tools and artifacts that are related to the fabrication of traditional soap. It was really interesting and I definitely recommend checking it out during your next visit to Saida. In this museum, I actually discovered for the first time that the first soaps ever made were made in the, in the Middle East region. And then the knowledge passed on to cities like Trablos and Saida. Saida doesn't only make amazing Lebanese food. You can also find great Italian food, like for example, the unmissable El Padrino. Hey, if ever you're in Saida and you wanna eat Italian food, El Padrino is the place to go. El Padrino makes a lot of different dishes with high quality ingredients and various sauces that go with them. Cleanliness and a rich taste make El Padrino the perfect destination for a delicious lunch with friends. This is the Paco del Pollo, right? <laughs> That's how Tao should say like man. <laughs> it is pizza time. Let's do this. Let's do this. Brezzaola. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Feed more. <laughs> wow. I have some good chicken right there. I'm taking the plate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but in Lebanon there's no food. I can say like. Mm. It could be better, no. Everything is delicious. Yeah. Next stop was Falafel Akawi. What's hey going on, guys? We stole the camera now and we are at Falafel Akawi. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have some Falafels and we're gonna show you how it's done. In case you didn't know, falafel is a little ball of chickpeas, coriander, and a mix of spices that are deep fried into sunflower oil. Okay, hello, sahla fikon. Nawarto falafel akka wa anna b'saida. Nahna hon nata bar atti ab falafel b'saida. Nahna tariban salna fuq sabiin sini hon falhin b'saida. Lama jina min Palestine ala Lebanon, fatah jidd Allah yirhamu al mahal, and taban tuarat la ajiel la wasilna nahna lahon. Right now we're gonna learn how to do the falafel. Uh, I already did it before, but I'm gonna be doing it again, saida style. So I'm gonna show you this right now. Let's get into it. So this is like uh, ice cream, same concept. I think we got the concept. Now we're gonna be what waiting for them to get fried. Then you roll those balls in a sandwich with pickles, tomatoes, some herbs like parsley, and then you add tarator sauce above it all. And that's how you get the mythical Akawi falafel sandwich. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Fresh falafel, man. Yeah. Crispy as it should be. Cheers! <laughs> so we just arrived to the final destination of today in Bash Ahmad, and their specialty is sandwiches. So let's go inside and see why their specialty is sandwiches and how they make it. Let's do this. It's been founded by both brothers that come from Saudi Arabia. It's been 27 years they've been established here and they're very famous for a lot of their sandwiches, especially uh, sandwiches of grains of sheep and rosto. So we're gonna be tasting some of those specialties and I'm gonna be explaining to you more of the specialties in detail. So here are all the varieties of sandwiches. That's the ingredients they use in the sandwiches, but we're gonna be focusing specifically on 
the roaster right here, sheep's brain and sheep's spinal cord. It seems super weird, but I'm pretty sure it's good. I mean, the place is famous for a reason. So this is a sheep's brain that's been boiled in water, and uh, I'm gonna be tasting this sheep's brain in a sandwich right now. <laughs> Guys, now we're gonna taste our food, our sandwiches. I'm Roberto. tasting, for the first time in my life, a sandwich of sheep brain. Spinal cord. I'm a Rosto person, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> I don't get out of my comfort zone. I never wanted to taste this. They forced me to, and he didn't even want to do it with me, so. Yeah. You need to try new stuff That's in good. life, kids. Brain sheep sandwich, yeah, spinal yeah. cord, and Rosto. Mm. I like it. It's, I never tasted anything like that. It's so tender. It's like very, very tender meat. This sandwich is no, good. it's really, it's it really is good. I just can't eat anymore. I'm oh. done. It's <laughs> this sandwich is amazing. And then, when we thought we hadn't seen enough, we ran into a very special barber. So you might not believe me, but it's the mayor who's giving me a haircut. The mayor of Saida. After 50 years of working in the field, he has now become the mayor and turned his shop into his office. Hello. And uh, this is the end of the vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Saida is an amazing city. Thank you so much for welcoming us in your city today. It was an incredible day. I mean, with all the hidden gems we, we explored, we got an amazing idea of what the city of Saida was. Uh, it's crazy because Saida is a great reminder that Lebanese people are incredible. And in Saida, there's no exception for this. This marks the end of the food vlog in Saida. We had a great team today with us. Best experience, Barrett Food Vlog. See you very, very soon for another epic food vlog. Peace! Bye! Bye! Thank you so much!